In 2014, I co-founded Good Nature Agro with two dear friends and one driving mission, to work with small-scale farmers to move out of poverty and into the middle class. I'm going to tell you in a few moments how we do this, but first indulge me. I'm going to tell a different rural development story, that of my own family. Like the farmers we work with, I too was raised on a farm and have my roots deep in the land. This man in the overalls and the straw hat looking the very picture of a pioneering farmer is my great-grandfather, Sam Jensen. This is harvest in Idaho three generations ago. Sam had four children, including my grandfather, Ken, seated here having a harvest meal. Ken was educated in a schoolhouse near the edge of the farm. College was never a real consideration. But he and his wife, Anne, prioritized education for their four children. Over the course of his lifetime, the teams of horses of his youth were left in the rearview mirror, and by the time he passed, tractors were literally driving themselves. My father and mother now run the farm. A lot of things have changed over these generations. Several trends have come forward. The area has gotten larger. Some farmers have stopped farming. The equipment has gotten more efficient, but also more complex. The systems have gotten more diverse and better for the land. This may seem like it's a story of a group of pioneering, tough, resourceful men and women, and it is. But beyond that, there's a parallel story that's told much less often about the development of rural economies and a system of community and support that allows all of these changes to happen. Despite this being very different from the work we do in Zambia, the general cycle of agriculture across the world is functionally the same. You start with a seed, you plant it, you nurture it, and you end up with more copies of the same. From here, this output can go towards food, it can go to industry, or, as good nature does, it can be planted again by other farmers to start, start their own cycle of growth and, hopefully, prosperity. But the reason that we're all here is because that prosperity is not evenly distributed or really anywhere close. This is a chart of global cereal yields from 1961 onwards. The U.S. and Europe, Latin America and Asia have all seen phenomenal growths in productivity. Sub-Saharan Africa has not. Good Nature's approach is to think differently about how we can accelerate the process of fixing that gap, of closing that gap. And to form the support systems that are currently lacking. To do this, we start by focusing on the core questions that every farmer, large, small, African, American, faces every single year. The first is, what am I going to grow? Who am I going to sell to? How do I get a good yield? Where am I going to get the seed and other inputs? And finally, how will I pay for it? Good Nature works in the legume seed sector, as I mentioned. These are crops like peanuts, black-eyed pea, soy, and beans. Legumes can utilize nitrogen from the air for their own growth. The most important question that farmers have is, who am I going to sell to? Often, without that system of support, they really don't know. So Good Nature is built on this principle of market fit. Being a seed company, a company that produces the very input that determines what characteristics come out of the field, allows us to move further up the value chain, to talk to food companies, to talk to processors, 
and to find what they really want in the legumes that they use when they produce snacks. Looking at this example of groundnuts, it's a very simple shift, but a critically important one, to move from the local varieties that are too high in oil and that people don't want to consume, to new varieties that taste better and that have demand. And what this unlocks is that not only do the farmers in our seed grower network have the market to sell to good nature, but when we sell that seed to other farmers, for the first time in their life, they're producing the right product that the market demands. The question we get most often is, how do I get a good yield? For us, that begins with having people that you can talk to, people you can go to for advice. Good Nature has built a grassroots network of extension agents, each serving and advising 40 of their peers throughout the season. All of these agents are revenue shares in the company, so they're incentivized the same way we are. The more that their 40 farmers produce, the better they get compensated. They're equipped with smartphones so that they can track their farmers' progress and the progress of their fields over multiple seasons. And technologies like handheld soil scanners that give immediate feedback on how your soil is doing as well as what inputs would be the right fit for you. This allows us to remain personal even as we scale. More and more farmers across Zambia and the surrounding region are answering this question by saying, Good Nature Agro. The seed produced by our seed grower network will be planted in about a month by farmers across the Southern Africa region. The total number of farmers that will be planting our seed this year is 180,000. How will I pay for it? In our seed network, we finance all of our seed growers internally. But we're learning. And with our customers, we're working with partners like Finca to utilize systems like mobile savings and layaway so that people can save up for their seed and use their own money instead of borrowing year on year. Every individual farmer has these questions. Every individual farmer deserves to have a community around them where they can have these questions answered. We currently have 4,400 seed growers in our network. When a grower enters and begins working with good nature, their baseline income per hectare is $113. The average farm size is slightly over three hectares, so you can do the math. This season, our growers average $357 per hectare. That's an increase of over three times. But our long-term target is $600. This $600 number may seem arbitrary, but it is in fact at the intersection of what is possible from a hectare of land, as well as what's needed to get farmers to their long-term goals. An example is Anis Tembo, shown here. She's a seed grower as well as a private extension agent for good nature. Annis is standing next to a home that she built with Good Nature proceeds. Behind her is her old house. Last season, Annis earned just over $1,500 producing for Good Nature. Like my grandfather, Annis was educated in a schoolhouse not far from the farm. Like him, she has four children as well. We're going to hear from her about some other things that Good Nature, or that Annis has done with her money. So, Ya Zambia. <laughs> ya mene nakwa nilisha kukonza nyumba ya anga, na ika plaster, na ika flow, nenzete TV, na gula, plasma. You might think, wait, I'm not here to help people get TVs, but the fact is, this is the first time that she has had the money for luxury goods. That's worth something. That's choice. This is Annis in her field of soy. 
Even though her story as a grower begins with that $1,500, it is actually much bigger because of her role as an extension agent as well. Annis and her 40 farmers produced enough soy seed for good nature to generate $46,000 in sales. Through the revenue sharing model that we use, that brings an additional $900 to Annis for her work as a trainer, bringing her net income through working with good nature to $2,500 in one season. But perhaps more important is that Annis is now a rural enterprise of her own. She is part of that community of support. The 40 farmers she work with, works with and trains again begin at that baseline. What I'm going to show you now is a progression of each of those individuals' net incomes per hectare this year. Annis has brought impact to her community and through her work, through her training, has helped farmers achieve incomes that they wouldn't have thought possible just a couple years ago. Throughout Southern Africa, there are communities like Annis's working under this old paradigm. The old crops with no market fit, no inputs, unfair market access. For an impact organization, this is opportunity. For a seed company, this is a $220 million opportunity. Millions of farmers need the right seed that unlocks markets alongside the services that can help them thrive. Good Nature is taking advantage of these linkages and this role as a connector and entering slowly through crops like sugar beans, where we work with buyers to get offtake agreements. 600 metric tons a month is what we've secured so far, 7,200 metric tons in a year. These are to be filled by customers of Good Nature Seed. We'll build to this, but in order to supply it, it will require over 15,000 farmers. These 15,000 farmers will have access to a $7 million per year market that would never have existed before. Good Nature is located here in eastern Zambia. Our strategy for growth is to enter into existing networks. In northern Zambia, we're setting up with 400 farmers to produce this variety of seed that unlocks the market. We, enter, we are entering through a non-profit project that closed down after five years when it ran its course. Those 400 farmers become ambassadors for good nature, recruit their neighbors, as Annis has. Next year, we're targeting 5,000 farmers and beginning the export process. In soybean, we did this in Eastern Province, successfully linking 600 of our seed customers to improved markets last season. This year, we're engaged with 3,800. In Central and Southern as well, we're working with 200 and 300 farmers respectively, starting small, earning trust, and following that farmer-to-farmer -farmer model. These questions are important whether you're in Idaho or you're in Zambia. But in fact, they all serve a bigger question that not just farmers, but everyone asks. What do I want? What am I here for? Why am I working? We talked before about things that Annis had built or purchased with her funds, but what we didn't talk about is the fact that she has, of those four children, three are young adults, two are in high school, and the eldest she is now sending to university where he's studying to become a nurse. I'm going to go back to Annis to close and talk about some of her hopes for her youngest daughter. Okay, we mwana mona monel munganizira ne. Kutu moyo wake ongangale moyo wa wa muntu. Of 
ni kati wao ambani mfeleke kusukuru. Akapunzira, zinuzima kala zipe. Kuchifukua ulo ni businessi, akachite businessi yangu ti yame somheni. Kaya ni kuli ma, akoli ma kuli ngana kuti alina mapunziro moto. So moyo wake, ulo ni nchido, akasele nde kuli ngana nisha alina mapunziro. So moyo wa moto wapunziro yako, umangala ni moto, wa moto, ungala moyo upe, kuchifukua amagaliza zinuzama ni zinga mtandiz. So nufuna kutu yu mwana, haka punzi ile nae. A few things stand out in that, but one you may not have noticed is that it is extremely rare for a farmer to hope that their child becomes a farmer where we work. Just that transition happening on its own is powerful. I went to Zambia multiple years ago and was first struck by the disparities of access to markets, lack of inclusivity, lower productivity, but it didn't take long to realize that in fact there were far more similarities than differences. Going forward, we're going to continue working with people like Annis, and our focus will be on playing that role of connector and of building the support communities that small-scale farmers need in every way that they need them. Thank you.